Hi Ceramics. I'm gonna go over the procedures and the steps on using underglazes. And um, you'll find the underglazes in the glaze room. We went over that when we um, when I took you on a tour of the glaze room. And I would prefer that when you do use the underglazes, you can take the whole pint um, and you can just take it right out of the cap or out of the jar. You might see that there already been some uh, poured out into these smaller containers. You can use those if they're, if they're labeled. Um, I would prefer that you don't do this though, as it creates um, a lot of waste of the product. All right, so at this point we know that underglaze is basically, I want you to think about it as color clay. And when this becomes, uh, when this is brushed on the um, surface of a bisque fired piece and it is fired, this color becomes part of the clay body or the piece, all right? Um, now it's not really going to shine or be um, uh, food safe until the actual glaze is on, all right? Uh, you can put on the clear glaze right after you do the underglaze, then it gets fired. Or when it's like this, you could fire it and then do this. So that'll just that's just an extra firing. All right. So um, just for your little practice planter, you'll see that when I put, I think this is the leaf green. Yeah, good eye. Okay. You'll see that that's relatively streaky and brushy. If you want something that has a little bit more opacity, you're gonna let that dry and put about two more coats on it to make sure, make sure that you read the label. Um, shake well and stir for a solid meow, 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 data sheets, blah, blah, blah. Okay, apply three even coats to greenware or bisque. For this application, we're applying it to our bisqueware. Um, tableware producers must test all meow, 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 meow. Okay, so thin with water if necessary. And that goes um, for you guys that want something that's a little bit more like watercolory. So because our bisqueware is so porous, it's gonna suck up all of the water um, from the um, underglaze and it's gonna dry relatively quickly. So my subsequent layers can be relatively fast. Okay. Now I'm using um, this little motif or pattern or illustration right here, um, just to kind of inform the design. Now again, that looks pretty doesn't look pretty. It looks pretty um, streaky and messy right now. So again, I want to make sure that I've got some even amounts here and I might even want to thin this out a little bit more. I'm gonna keep the space around this, the negative space, um, just the white of the clay body. Um, I like how the clear glaze looks on it. Um, so it's not like I necessarily have to cover every inch of this pot. All right, what doesn't really work with underglazes is going like this, scrubbing. So try not to do that. Um, and also when you are painting edges, you wanna make sure that they are nice and solid. So like something like that, I would fix. So no frayed edges is a good way to kind of think about that.
All right. All right, when I have um, a good solid three coats, I can start layering. All right, so um, kind of what I have envisioned for um, this pattern are some, maybe some black outlines or just some detail. So again, I'm using my, um, the motif or the pattern that we, um, that we did on that one day that we practice being an illustrator. And again, the cool part about under glazes is that they can be layered and they won't run together. All right, now if I look at that black line, it's kind of inconsistent. It's a little bit messy. It's a little bit transparent in some areas. So I could let that dry. Or I am gonna let that dry and go over those lines. Now there are some um, instances where like if you've got like small little dots like this, I don't have to go over that dot because even just this is enough amount of um, underglaze. I'm going to make these like a little stem here. You can see that how I'm holding my paintbrush is flat. And that way I have a pretty thick application of this. I might decide later on to go over. But again, you can see the difference between how thick this is and how washy this is. And for this particular um, piece, I don't want something that's this washy. All right, now maybe I wanna add on to this, maybe introduce um, another color. And it's going to be this <clears throat> mixed up red and white. Thankfully, the artist that did this uh, labeled it, so I know what it is. I don't know what it's going to look like when it's um, fired. I mean, I have a pretty good idea, but um, I'm just going to take my chances here. This is relatively watery, so you can kind of see how gravity is going to take hold of that if I move my pot. Okay. And again, this is the reason why we um, really like underglazes is, is because we can layer them and they won't run together um, during the firing process. Okay, I'm going to finish this and um, come back to it. Stay tuned. All right, I'm back. So this is the pattern that I developed from the illustration activity that we did a few weeks ago. Um, actually, this is where I started. Um, this is where I developed and here is where I am. So it's kind of that artistic process, which is cool. All right, you can see some of my underglaze kind of dripped a little bit because it was wet as, as I was working on it. Um, what I was really cognizant of was where my hands were um, so that I didn't smudge anything. I smudged a little bit down here earlier. 
So at this point, what I'm going to do is um, let this dry. And I think I am going to fire this so that the underglaze becomes part of the clay body. And then I can put the glaze on it, that clear glaze. Put it back into uh, the kiln for a cone 05 firing. And this will be nice and glossy and glassy looking. Um, so yeah, now I'm gonna let this dry, like I said, and I might decide to maybe put some more layers of um, underglaze on it. Maybe I wanna do something on the inside. Um, not sure yet. I'm a huge fan of tiny little polka dots, especially when it comes to underglaze, because really all I have to do is this, and it looks cool, and it's easy. I don't have to go over these, because they're not really too thin. It's a binder clip I keep knocking, by the way. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. It helps if you boop your underglaze dots too. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think I am going to let this be. Okay, so fire. Fire and then glaze, and then glaze fire. Stay tuned. <laughs> 